This episode of Play the Bay is brought to you by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. BetOnline has you covered for all news, scores, and odds. It's the best way to place your bets, and it's free to sign up. Head to the website BetOnline.ag or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline, your online sportsbook experts. And now, play the bay. From Channel Side Drive, where Lord Stanley Cup rests. Time kicks down the Lightning with the Stanley Cup. Travel across the bridge to St. Pete to find our American League champs. And the Tampa Bay Rays have just won the American League pennant. And get ready to fire the cannon. Lob pass toward the end zone. Gronkowski makes the catch. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. What a great grab by Gronk. Because it's time for another episode of Play the Bay. Play the Bay. Hello and welcome back to Play the Bay presented by Believe Podcast Network and Three Daughters Brewing. And welcome back to Onside Chicks for another crossover episode, our second. In Crossovers. Life. Ooh, to I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to become one. We love it. That's called the NFL offseason because nothing is going on. Because <laughs> yeah. it's so dry. So we're like, hey, let's let's uh, let's team up tonight. Let's save ourselves. Let's do some collaborations while we're at it. Hey, we still got some some nice news and tidbits to pass around That's in true. both areas of the show. It yep. can't be an NFL offseason without like bonkers rumors and trades going on. This is true. Mm-hmm. Very much so. We all know, all very aware of the Julio saga that's never going to end hopefully and aaron, Ro- aaron Rodgers living his best life in hawaii no. right now he's got the man bun never coming back so you know that's all good i love that for him i how we're okay so we know how his vacation was did you guys do anything for memorial day uh i know jordan did so jordan please share with the, oh, um, the dais what you did over the weekend I don't know if we can tell just from my voice that it was. <laughs> I spent the entire weekend at the Jersey Shore in a house, fist pumping on Ocean Drive in Sea Isle. Um, it was honestly too much. Um, I don't, as I'm drinking wine, um, I don't think I can consume liquor for another at least four months. I don't want to smell it. I don't want to be near it. Quitter. It was, <laughs> it was quite the experience that I wasn't prepared for. So was this like typical Jersey Shore? Like you're going into bars, clubs, you're running in a huge group. Somebody gets in a fight, then you got to run out and you try to grab all your friends. I mean, what was, was it typical that? Oh yeah. When I tell you it was everything you expected. And then some of Jersey Shore, everywhere you turned, there was something going on. At one point we started drinking so early in the morning. I literally blacked out in the middle of the day, went home, <laughs> took a nap, yes. woke back up. The house was empty. And I was like, where is everybody? In my pajamas, I stumble back to the bar and then yes. at stage, I jump up on stage in my pajamas looking really? for my friends. And then Mr. Blindside comes on. So I'm on stage by myself in my PJs. <clears throat> Wow. Still not totally coherent, jamming. And then the bouncers are like, all right, it's time for you to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you for letting me have my moment. Gordon, I have a question for you. Is it yeah. is it anything like it was back when like Jersey Shore, the TV show, was popular? Is it anything like is it still like that now or is it way different? No, it this weekend, so all last summer, very different for pandemic reasons. Mm, yeah. This summer, and I think it was just because everybody was so excited to be back out and to be nor it felt so right. Felt so <laughs> jersey, like the most jersey thing you've ever seen. But Baby, all the Jersey Shore, The Jersey Shore <laughs> people were all from New York. They are imposters. They're not real Jersey. Hey. So well. makes sense. It sounds like you did. It sounds like you did the thing. I mean, you made it we all did. happen. We did. Um, I should never be allowed back in Sea Isle. Twenty five <laughs> kids in one house. I feel so bad for our landlord. Oh, I love that God. for you. Love that for you. <clears throat> yes, Kaylee, you had a vacation. I did. I went to Nashville. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I've never been in Nashville, so I was excited to go. I got some food recommendations, uh, some bar recommendations. I had the opposite weekend as Jordan, though. Like, I avoided <laughs> Broadway, like the plague. There were so many people. Ah, oh. I, they're just people I don't want to, like, touch physically. <laughs> whoa. Whoa, and wait, so I, whoa. I, <laughs> so I was just like, you know what? Uh, we're not going to do that. So we did very low-key, like, adult-esque type of bars. <clears throat> Like couple esque type of bars. That's or like, that's, yeah. that's like adulting to the max. That's that's almost like your yeah. married land. Like that's something it's, like my, yeah. my wife and I would go do is let's go to the restaurants. I don't yeah, know. I'm talking yeah, like yeah. an old man. Although that's fun though, but then you get really so smashed fun. Yeah, so I fun. had Wawa and Smart Food popcorn for dinner. <laughs> every I was like, every meal we had was like a hundred dollars or more, and I was like crying. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what? We could be on Broadway right now. So let's just <laughs> let's be glad we're not there. And it was funny because like I got to Sunday and I was like, I really appreciate the amount of drinking we've been doing because we basically would go to brunch. And this is like the daily routine. We'd go to brunch. Good we'd lunch. have a drink right at brunch. Like he would have a bloody, I'd have whatever. Brunch. And then we'd go do an outdoors activity. We'd get active. We'd be adults. And then we would go to dinner and have like two more drinks. And then we went to a bar and would maybe have a drink and just hang out. But I, I will fall say, asleep at like 8 p.m. Okay. It was like midnight, <laughs> but that was still so late for me. I was like, oh my gosh. It, you would get like feel terrible about myself. No, right I'm just so old. <laughs> but we got this, like, we found this game bar, you know, like a barcade. Yes. yes. So we found that, and then he was getting so upset because I was beating him in Tekken. And oh wow, we made a bunch of life bets on Tekken, and guess what? I won them all. So oh wow, you know, you you tell us that your boyfriend's really good at video games, but then like you destroy him. I you know. Destroy is, him. He, yeah. is he even that good? No, like, I didn't. I never said he was good. I just says he, oh, play, okay. he's, he's said he plays. He plays him. Okay. He's he's not good. No, but it was so funny because he was getting so upset because I think he just assumed he was going to end me and Tekken because I'm just not like a I'm not that I'm not like a Mortal Kombat like I don't really like those games. So the fighting games, nothing on those. Although like, I can see Kaylee being like the ultimate buttons button masher and then just doing the sweep move like the, constantly until it just pisses him off. I didn't even know until halfway through our bet because it was like 10 total games that you had to win. And I didn't know oh, wow. until halfway through that they each have moves. So I would just be like, how did I keep doing that? And he's like, you're doing her move. And I was like, what move? And he, <laughs> I think he felt even worse about himself when he had to explain to me that they each have moves. He's like, wow, I'm losing to a person that doesn't even understand how the game works. <laughs> So. Wow. It's a lot for a guy to lose in video games, especially if they know what they're doing. Yeah. And you're the other person is going, I don't even know what the move is, but I just keep doing it. So yeah. <laughs> I can understand where Chris is coming from there. That would hurt like in the deep recesses of everything. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure after he lost, he's probably I'm, I'm questioning this relationship right now. Look, I love damaging male oh egos. God. It's a hobby. Yikes. Did he do? Dribbles. Did he withhold? Did he withhold from you that night because you kept beating him so bad? He's like, no, no. no. I feel like no. I feel like no. low key. No. He, I feel like low key. He likes to be a little bit of a sub, you know. So oh, okay. he's, he's about it. <laughs> <laughs> like no, no. My ego is broken. You get yeah. no. You get no sex tonight. Yeah. Right. Sleep on the other side of the bed. Sleep on the other side. <laughs> Video games are crucial. What did you guys do? What did you guys do? I was uh I was very calm. I know um I just went up to um St. Pete, Lutz, hung out with a, a good friend of mine for a, a day or two, but that week before in work was uh, a killer. So I actually Friday kind of relaxed and Saturday took it easy and then uh you know played a little bit harder on Sunday. But just wanted to be outside. I mean it was you know it was nice. So just being outside, loving Florida uh, weather. Oh my God, it was 60 degrees and raining every single day in Jersey. Oh. Were we still out there all day, every day? Yes, but it was oh. miserable. Oh. <laughs> like no. literally worst case scenario. That, that's I got to have it's sunshine. Like nine, it's like 90 degrees down here with humidity. I don't want to yeah. hear about it. It was 60 and raining. Come on, give me a break. You yeah. know, it was, it was really bad. <laughs> yeah. God, it's 60 and raining. Yeah, it's 90 goddamn degrees. It feels yeah. like it's 150 and there's no rain in sight, although it's supposed to rain the next couple of days, though. So, oh yeah. <clears throat> we'll give it All a right. 
Well, do we want to talk hockey? Evan has his yes. hat ready, ready to go. Do we want to talk hockey before we get into football? Well, yeah, yes. of course. We're up to nine. Right, yeah, the, they're doing I'm well. The, <laughs> the canes. Yeah, Let I'm just double moment. checking. I'm double checking. Okay, so the Lightning have a two to zero lead on the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, how are you guys feeling? How are you guys feeling after a tough first series, which did not go to seven? Like me and who who predicted it? Me and Chip. Me and Evan. Me and Chip. I, think I, I said, said five. I said six. Uh, no, I said, you said seven. seven. I said yeah. seven. Yeah, yeah, said yeah. Seven. So. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, you know, this could be the ultimate slap in the face because remember a couple of years ago, Carolina swept yeah. the lightning in the first round and it was like a total embarrassment. Um, I will put out some stats. So Andre Vasile- Vasilevsky is not human, uh, by the way. He is, he is now a certified alien. Uh, here's some stats in the postseason so far. A- through eight games, he has a .939 overall save percentage, a .953 five versus five save percentage, plus 6.6 goals saved above expect uh, above expected, and he has stopped 68 of 76 high da- high danger shots and stopped 107 of the last 109 shots faced. Rounded to the nearest decimal point. <laughs> I mean that so. is uh, <clears throat> that is good, like goat status. That is like I've got. Uh, f- like five other uh, arms with me right now. I'm the the octopus, and I can just save anything that's that shot against me. That's unreal right now as a goal a goaltender. Yeah, unreal. power play defense definitely stepped up. Obviously, Vasilevsky one of the bigger parts, but uh, they've been killing power plays very nicely. Um, still a little bit sloppy turnover the puck and zone sometimes. The only thing that scares me about this series is that the Lightning are getting outshot, almost doubled, almost doubled up, especially last game. Yeah. 15 shots total, got two goals, which is great. But I think I think Carolina had 38 shots. So, I mean, they're getting a lot more opportunities, putting a lot more heat on Vass. So, um, you know, there's going to be a time where you're going to have to get more opportunities and take advantage of them. I'm hoping we can come back home, get game three, and then see where the chips are going to fall. But I think game three is going to be really pivotal for our team. So glad we get to come back home pack the arena, you know, get everybody going and uh, hopefully bring a lightning victory for three. Which uh, they did expand uh, fan yes. capacity. I think it's up to, what, 13,000 now? Yeah, I think it's somewhere in that ballpark. I think they yeah. had 15 or 16 in Carolina, so I think yeah. similar numbers expected in Amley, but um, I don't know. I think we're going to keep going. I think you've seen, we're still, like I said, I think we're still tightening up a little bit. We still have some sloppy turnovers in the zone. Um, but I think everybody's coming together and I think we'll, we're continue to get, uh, to get cooking. Hopefully the only thing that scares me is the shots and the opportunities. Chip, you got some extra money. You want to go tomorrow night? Ooh, did you get some AMC money in there? You want to take some out and just go to the game tomorrow? I mean, what's the story with that? Tell I me. Mean, I, I mean, what's... there's uh there's, there, I, I got it. I got a guy. I got a, you guy. Got a guy. I got a guy. I got a guy. I got a guy. I mean, don't. Hey, you got a guy. Let's get <laughs> some numbers going. Let's time. make it an evening. You know? Let's uh, after the show, I'll I'll, I'll make some moves and uh, because I, I mean, I mean, it is game three. It's it'll well, be it'll be rock and rolling in, in Emily. Because uh, hey, if, you, if you've ever been to a playoff game there, it's it's something else, man. It's have I been? I think I've no. I don't think I've been to a playoff game yet been to a lot of regular season but not a I went game. I went a few years ago when they played the Rangers and me and my buddy had 300 level seats and then I knew somebody that was down in the first level called up his girlfriend I was like hey is he is he there he's like yeah call him up boom he's in the hard rock suite he's like yeah just wait oh, outside God. wait outside the door I'll get you in and I was like and I was already mm, probably five beers in and I was like okay <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna wait outside the door like we're going to the car <laughs> so we get down there and I stupidly knocked on the door I don't know why I knocked on the door. That wasn't part of the directions. And he comes, <laughs> Scott came out. He's like, wait until after the first period, I'll get you in. And boom, we were in. And then bam, rest of the way, we're club level, all you can eat, all you can drink in the hard rock suite. It was, oh, Love that for you. I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't drive. It was so great. Yes. Take advantage of those opportunities. Oh yeah. I can't Very wait. Much so. But yeah, let's, yeah, I'll make some moves. If you want to go tomorrow night, we'll go. Yeah. Let's take yeah. a look. Take a ganders. Let's Thanks see, yeah, for we'll, the invite. Kaylee, you're yeah, more than welcome to. I mean, <laughs> well, Jordan, you live up. In Jordan, Philly, she's not even gonna be here. Yeah, you she's live. Gonna up. I'm gonna be on the other side of the country tomorrow. <laughs> she's going. Kaylee, to the if, if you and if you and your boy want to come, open invite. He's not here, but you know, if you want to come too, we can do a live live broadcast from Emily. 
What's I don't. I don't, but I just wanted to guilt you. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I actually feel bad now because I didn't invite you, but you know, no, I'm just kidding. You're you know, I'm busy kidding. beating your boyfriend in video games. So Yeah. That's right. We're good. Yeah, I That's gotta awesome. get my Fortnite game up again. <laughs> took a couple of days off oh now I'm God. slacking. So. Chip, do you, right. do you do you before we move on to football? Because yeah. I know what that's what everybody's kind of clamoring to, to talk hey, about. Hey, look out, that's me. I'll do <laughs> that. Even my even myself. Yeah. Do you think do you think there is a chance for a sweep? For a sweep? Yeah. Um uh, I honestly I think there's a small chance. The shots, like I said, the the shots that Shots and opportunities. You cannot have a team shoot over twice what you're putting on against their goalie and have – I mean, the, the puck just haven't hasn't really gone their way. They've had great opportunities, and they've hit posts. You know, Vass has been great. Not trying to take anything, anything away from him, but if you're putting that many shots on goal, there's just bound to be a night where the puck doesn't flip your way or drop your way. Um, so, I mean, I think three is huge. Um, I think the – Hurricanes will be a lot more defeated if we can take them in three. If we lose three, um, I get I get nervous. I get really nervous. I tell you what, man. If we go and they lose, I'm blaming it all on you. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow, that makes me really want to go now. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, man. You know, I, I'm it's, it's, it's the double hooked I, double IPA that's stuck. I'm sorry, man. So. Mm-hmm. All right, well that's fine. We'll figure it out though. Definitely want to definitely want to learn and see if we can go. So okay. call a guy. I'm I'm on Twitter right now. I've got a guy. Get a get a guy about a horse. Yeah, I've got a guy. Don't worry. Don't worry. All right. Okay. All right. Evan, switch your hat. Okay. Hold on. Hat switch coming in hot. Hat switch. Lid change, if you will, please. <laughs> Is that a sock cap? Oh, we got BA's cap. Okay. BA's sorry. Cap. Took me a All second. Right. Speaking of Bruce Arians, he compared Kyle Trask to Andrew Luck. So we just have oh, to God. talk about this because yeah. what? Yeah. I'm not I'm not mad at it because he definitely qualified it by being like, he's not Andrew Luck, but he's smart, like Andrew Luck. Um <laughs> it was, I feel like people are turning this too much because all he was all he kept saying mentally, like yeah. he thinks like Andrew Luck. And like you can think like Andrew Luck, it doesn't mean you're gonna come out and you're gonna play like Andrew Luck. Also, did Andrew Luck even play like Andrew Luck? Dun 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 dun. I mean <laughs> in overall, like looking at his career, like are we overall <laughs> Are we thoroughly impressed based on expectations how he performed throughout his career? I mean, I don't know. Maybe injuries. Injuries really deteriorated. Injuries, yeah, yeah. yeah. Injuries. Injury, the the guy we saw in the beginning. Yes, I loved before all the injuries. Yes, is cerebral quarterback, mobile, agile, great arm strength, could look down the field, made things happen with his feet. I mean, yeah, I loved I loved uh, him coming in, but. The NFL, I mean, injuries just break down your body. And a quarterback, you know, those guys are, are usually getting smoked the most, depending upon your offensive line. So um, it beat him up in, in the end. But, yeah, I love the player he started out as. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. I don't think this is a good – no. I don't know. <laughs> No. Okay. What? The comparison. No. The comparison. Yeah. Or Andrew uh, Luck. It's that's. Or Andrew Luck. I no no. I, I I trust me. When Andrew Luck was in the league, I I loved watching him play. Great quarterback. I think he retired too early. And obviously, mm-hmm. injuries made him say, "I'm I'm done. I'm going to live in the woods now for the rest of my life." Which is fine. You're never going to see him again. No, you're never going to see him again. He's going to come <laughs> out with like an Abraham Lincoln beard, maybe even longer than oh, that. Yeah. He'll, look, he'll look like Duck Dynasty when he when he reemerges <laughs> when he reemerges in the public. <laughs> He'll look like Duck Dynasty, but I. I uh, but to compare Kyle Trask to Andrew Luck, no, no, no. Like even if you said, oh, I, "Look, I'm comparing Kyle Trask to maybe Andrew Luck when he played for Stanford," that's still a slap in the face. No, mm-hmm. no, Kyle Trask is nowhere near that level. And I'm sorry, like BA, he's a smart guy, he's a great coach, but no, I I don't trust that comparison. I don't want to. Because you know, I, I know, no way, no, 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 just no, 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 just no, no, just no, no. <laughs> the you comparison, can't compare Kyle Trask to Andrew Luck. No, the comparison I would see, and I just this just kind of came to me. Matt Marcus yeah. Mariota. There you go. No, I think more of a Matt Stafford. 
No. If you go back to no. him in the beginning of his the start, he's got a good strong arm. I think that he's more of a he kind of moves around more and makes things happen. He does look down the field, but I just think that right now, athletically in college, you can get away with things in the NFL that you don't. They both have arm talent, but I think that that athletic talent really levels out when you get to the NFL. And you see that in OTAs, you're only going against, well, right now you're going against rookies, you know, you're going against non vets and everything's slow speed. So I think once you see him in a real, you know, in preseason or whenever we see him, obviously I think that comparison goes away. Andrew Luck came in and actually hit the ground running. So, and Andrew Luck went to Stanford. And I mean, there's a, t- a million other things I think that completely make these guys different. I, if I'm BA, I probably grab for a different player. I don't grab Andrew <clears throat> Luck. That's not where I go. I would say maybe Ryan Leaf. See, that's now that's even, I think that's sillier. I think that's even worse than calling him Andrew Luck. We've we've talked about this on episodes before where like, you know, is he actually the answer after Brady mm-hmm. retires? And to me it's it's like no. You the sample I saw and at Florida was this guy will be a backup college football. Yeah. He, this guy will be a backup even coming into the pros. I I understand that ship. But there's some guys you can tell that are going to be No you can't. Yes you can. There's no, some can't. guys where you can look at and cause and say they're going to be more. Ryan Leaf is the greatest example of that right there. Everybody coming out of college is like, oh, man, this guy going to football, man. Hall of Famer. We drafted him for him, man. Grab him. <laughs> yeah. And he was gone. Can I finish? Sure. Can- <laughs> there are some Go guys ahead. you can just look at and say that's that's a guy that's probably going to be a career backup. Is yeah. Well, you know what? You can shake your head no. I'm going to I'm gonna keep going with my little thing. Okay. All right. Bye. Go with your thing. Yes. Bye. Yes. Yes, no, yeah. Whatever Kaylee just did, the spice thing, the spice, <laughs> spice. <laughs> because you can just look at those guys and say they they will be a career like Blake Bortles, career backup. That's a guy that you know he went to His UCF. Over, it's easy yeah. to say that now. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, he's he's a backup in. Uh, well, yeah, but his career somebody. As a starter is over. But he's a career backup now. But there's a lot. There's well, so many guys that have come out and, and don't get acclimated to the NFL world so easily. And to me, Trask is not one of those guys. And historically, it's proven that Florida Gator quarterbacks don't do well in the pros. And he's just going to be another one of those guys that are on that list. Ladies, please agree with me or disagree with me. I, I, I want to hear your thoughts. I'm going to agree with you. And I'm not, not full picture because I don't think you can just judge everybody right off the bat. But I will agree with you in regards to Kyle. He, you look at him, he's not a mobile quarterback at all. And I get it. He makes his way into the end zone. He makes it happen. But in this day and age, you need to be able to drop back and pass. You need to be able to have the arm and you need to be able to move. He does He has accuracy, but he doesn't have the arm and he doesn't have the mobility. So to me, this doesn't seem like someone, even if you're sitting behind the best there is, this doesn't seem like someone to me that can come in and eventually take over a franchise. I just don't see it happening. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with that. And I think, I think the issue is you're drafting a guy who Tom Brady likes, which is not necessarily a problem, but when that player is compared sort of in play to Tom Brady, which is why he, there was this whole thing about, he likes the way he plays. It seems very similar to Brady and that he's not very mobile. Maybe Brady can mentor him. This is the best place for him to land. I agree with that. He is the, that is the best place for Kyle Trask to land for Kyle Trask. Now, is that the best person for the Buccaneers to have going forward? No, because guess what? Tom Brady is Tom Brady. No one else behind him is Tom Brady. And that style of play is not where NFL offenses are going, and it's not going to work for that much longer. And Tom Brady is probably the only person and the last person that will get away with that style of play. So this seems like a waste of time, but I do kind of get the feeling that they want this guy to be the future in Tampa. That's, that's what I'm getting as a vibe from the front office. Mm-hmm. Well, when you draft him in the second round, I mean, that's yeah, I mean listen, you guys don't put up here, here. Davis Mills. What about Jimmy Garoppolo? I you guys could have got J- Davis Mills. I wanted Jimmy, Davis Mills. I, I wanted Davis Mills. I, know. I wanted him for you guys. So Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> went to Eastern Carolina, bum freak, Jordan, wherever he went to college. Eastern, what was it? Eastern Tennessee U? Where did he where did he go? I don't even know. 
So you look at a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo, and my eyes go straight to backup quarterback for the rest of his life. As soon as he's drafted, you call him a backup. Now, he sits behind Tom Brady for years. Eastern Illinois University. Eastern University. Thank you. Eastern uh, Illinois University. And uh, he sits behind Tom Brady, ends up causing a riff enough to get traded out, goes to another team, and ends up going to the Super Bowl. So when you first look at him, you call him a backup quarterback, but he's led a team. Now, granted, being injured and being hurt, you know, things happen. He's been to this. He's been to a Super Bowl. So I mean, what do you what do you call a quarterback like that? If a backup so pitcher to the Super Bowl, then do you still think he's capable of being a productive starter? I think yes. I think the same thing with Nick Foles. Now, granted, he's on the back end of his career, and when he was drafted, he was not thought of as a starter. And he took it took him a long time to even become a starter. And when he became the starter, he went in Super Bowl and got the MVP. So I just don't see how do you correlate somebody's career before they've taken one NFL snap. Not even prognosticators, no one we've spoken to, None of the people, Mel Kuyper, any of those guys can do that. How can we do that? Basically, that's at you, L. Bushman. Oh, the it is. Oh, I was going to let the ladies go. They, uh, they, yeah, I would let them answer. Too, I, so. I, <laughs> that's I, the I, only thing I'm saying. I'm saying okay. there's precedent for people that look like backups who get put in extraordinary okay. situations well, and I'll, perform. I'll, 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 I'll go to your Jimmy Garoppolo deal. We've, okay. We haven't really seen a full season of him yet because he's so injury prone. And <clears throat> from what we've seen, it's not that much because San Francisco runs the ball constantly. So that tells me that Shanahan doesn't really trust him as a quarterback to begin with. And they're still really not 100% on him anyways because they just drafted a quarterback at number, you know, three. So that tells me. That tells going, me that he costs too much. That doesn't tell me he's not talented. I, I, you know, you can that, you can learn helps. behind Brady all you want. You can go and be a starter somewhere, but you're not. You, look, there's the Brian Hoyers of the world. There's the Jimmy Garoppolo's mm -hmm. of the world. There's all those guys that can learn and learn and learn on under Brady. But when they go and start somewhere, it's it they fall flat. They don't they don't become that. Oh well, he's he's Brady's protege. He's going to do well. He's going to lead us to you know. Now, the what is the definition of falling flat? Because. When Garoppolo played, he won the majority of the games to get San Francisco to the Super Bowl. So going to the Super Bowl is falling flat. That's the biggest game of the year. That's the He's two best teams in the surrounded. NFL. Garoppolo is surrounded by so much talent. Yeah. What yeah. do you think and the definition of a good team is? Yeah, it's a good, but he's not a great quarterback. He's, he's not just lucky yeah. to be on a great team. Right. And he's not the I think they work as a system with yes. a system yeah. type of quarterback. Obviously we know this about the Shanahan offense. Like that is what we know. So it's tough because I do feel like a lot of mediocre quarterbacks could have had success there. Now I know the win percentage is obviously significantly higher with Garoppolo there. Yes. That, that could also be a lot of game management. That could be a lot of different factors as far as just the way that they're standing in front of Garoppolo on the line, the way that they're game managing when he's in there, as opposed to him being a, a athletically talented individual enough <clears throat> to consistently be a starting quarterback. And I think that's the tough part with the Nick Foles comparison as well as, yeah, he stepped up in a big moment, but that was an extraordinary moment that speaks nothing to his ability to lead a team long-term. Yeah. And like, I, I owe my entire life, to Nick Foles, and I will yeah. never talk bad on Nick <laughs> Foles, but he is the world's greatest backup quarterback. We yeah. saw he he's not a good starter. He doesn't know how to manage a team, and we saw that. We saw a bunch of teams try for him. I've been personally just, victimized by she Nick Foles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, I don't want to take anything. I literally almost got the number nine tattooed on me the night. Why before. would you even Whoa. consider doing that? <laughs> I, there was Whoa. a lot of alcohol involved. <laughs> uh, Eagles, okay. I'm running around the streets of Philadelphia <laughs> and knocking on every tattoo shop, asking someone to tap. It didn't happen, probably for the right reasons, but. He can't, he can't come in and start a team. So, like, obviously he can have success, and he did have great success. Like I said, I owe him my life. But he, I still wouldn't trust him to take another team to a – like, coming in as their starter, taking a team to a Super Bowl. 
Sure. sure. I'll leave you guys with this. Just one pondering fact. <clears throat> Besides coaching staff, who's the number one player on the field that gets the blame for a win and a loss? The kicker. It's the quarterback. I'm just oh. <laughs> the kicker so, gets one time. <laughs> The kicker yeah. does get blamed, but if you're a quarterback, you step up and you take those. So I don't know. We'll see with Trask. Like I said, I I have a tough time yanking quarterbacks off the roster before they've even been in for one play. So, and that's just me. I don't like the movement of quarterbacks, uh, you know, going around. I think it's already really weird um, that, you know, you're seeing potential Hall of Fame quarterbacks shuffling teams, maybe with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I think that's – that just never would have happened 10 years ago. Like it's not even a, in a thought process of any coach whatsoever. So it's just weird. I'm catching up with all this hall of fame quarterback movement stuff. Listen, I, I'm glad that you brought up Aaron Rodgers because yeah. you know, there is the saga that's going on with Aaron Rodgers right now. And Aaron Rodgers is going to take a year off. He's going to host jeopardy, make a lot of money. Cause I heard they're going to pay him 15 to $20 million to, to host that show. He's a very smart guy. He's got the man bun. He's strumming the guitar with miles Teller who got punched in the face the other day. Not by Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Not by Aaron Rodgers. Let me clarify. Circulating. Not by Aaron Rodgers. Apparently he owed somebody $60,000 for, for some wedding stuff and he never paid, uh, <laughs> but he's going to take a year off. Once Brady retires, comes to Tampa Bay. Okay. So, I'm saying it right now. That's what's going to happen. Okay. But lo that and behold, sounds like a pipe dream to me. It is. Yeah. I, a guy can wonder and make yeah. things like that, but he'll, he's going to come back to, to Green Bay. But that's just my scenario that I like to play in my head. It's all good. It's okay. I talked myself into the chances of him coming to Philly, too. So it's okay. Well, if coming from a person that was about to get Nick Foles' number tattooed on her arm, <laughs> <laughs> it was a moment of weakness. Okay. I was very excited. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, he's not going to report. You know, all his teammates oh. are going to be calling him. Devontae Adams, Tanya, all the line. He's missing his one of his good centers, Lindsley. He's gone. You know, it's just it's time to move on. The organization as a whole is going to take a black eye from this. They're not going to trade him. They're going to make him sit out. And we've already talked about this on both shows is that the Packers, they're not a normal organization. The people, people own that team, individual people own that team. So it's one of the toughest things to have to skirt around and figure out how you move forward as an organization. Cause you can't just fly out there and cut a guy uh, or just yeah. tell him, Hey, you know, it's not a one man show. It's a lot of people show. Uh, and thank you, Chuck. I will go ahead and get one of those ASAP. So I don't know. We'll have to see, but I think, uh, what do we all think about the Denver rumor? Is that the only team that we feel he would end up on? It, it makes it, it makes the most sense. Yeah. Or, well, you could throw in San Francisco in there too as well, but but Denver does make the, the most sense because you can you can package a deal with that where you could throw in either Drew Locke or, or Teddy Bridgewater and then like a few picks here and there. But, you know, if you, you if you send him over, I mean, he's going into a bunch of talent that's already there. They just – Yeah. Like Denver's like a couple pieces away. And the quarterback position is one of them. That's what they're away from. And, you know, that it makes the most sense for them. But, you know, he could go out to California. I mean, he had, he's, you know, doing the Jeopardy thing and he could be close by to a second job that he's doing. So I think the only, the only logical thing to me for him to go to would, he's, He's not going anywhere. He's staying in Green Bay. He's not. He's not signing anywhere. Well, they're else. not going to trade him. He's not. Yeah. Well, he's not going to trade him, and they're not going to make him they're, sit out. He's, he's have coming. To retire. I no. He's not. He's not going to do any one of those unless unless he just has an epiphany and says, "Look, I made a pun. I made a ton of of effing money. I could host a game show where I'm not going to get hit by guys that are two two fifty to three hundred pounds. I could do this for you know. I, all my tapings are in like the same month." And then the rest of the year, I can just chill and make a ton of money. So he could say, while he's strumming his guitar in Hawaii, <laughs> with his, his and his his wife is an actress. She's a working actress. She you know primarily works out of L.A. So he could say, you know, screw it. I'm gonna move to L.A. with my wife, make a ton of money doing this game show, and strum a guitar with my man bun, and not have to worry about you know the politics and the stupidity of of my my team that I used to love playing for that you know, have individual owners 
instead of one guy making decisions about what they're going to do with my career. Like, and didn't let me know they're going to like draft a quarterback, you know, when they, when they did. So he could just say, screw it and, and leave the league all, all together. Uh, I think he's going to stay in green Bay and I think yeah. he's going to come out and play this year. And yeah. I, I think this is all speculation. And I think we're all getting antsy because we haven't gotten any answers and it's the off season and nothing else is going on. So this is how we get enjoyment. We get this big arm. <laughs> yeah. We get to do. yeah. <laughs> the one thing that I will say though, is if he goes to Denver, imagine how crazy that division is going. To yeah. Get. Insane. Like that would be unreal. But yeah. let's like I am fully convinced that this is all drama for no he's sitting back looking at everything on Twitter, laughing at everything. I really think he's gonna come out and play and nothing's gonna change, but we'll see. I mean, I feel like the only way he leaves football or he leaves Green Bay is leaving football, right? Like I think like Evan said, we you've seen him exploring other career opportunities, you've seen him in Hawaii. I think he's just having this moment of isn't the only thing I haven't you know I've been so great in my career but haven't storms are getting her yeah <laughs> it's all good it sounds like she got abducted yeah. by a UFO <laughs> the aliens oh. grabbed her yeah. oh no I, I well, think what she was trying to say was you know, with, with where he's at right now and we, yeah. we've seen it all over Instagram and, and, you know, mo multiple accounts like miles Teller's wife is just putting this all over IG about, you know, what they're doing in, in, in Hawaii right now. He could just, I, I agree with you, Jordan. I think he's, he's coming back to green Bay. I think that's the logical choice for him because he, because he said it out loud. Like I want to come back. Like I, I, I want to play for green Bay. I want to retire my career there. I don't want to leave. It's just, you know, it's, the decisions they've made as a front office has just been like, what do you like? They did the same thing to Brett Favre too. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much they forced him out well, yeah. by not by not treating him well. And this is a guy that you know won you a Super Bowl and has tried to win you multiple Super Bowls by you know being look. The guy was not the MVP of last year, yeah. and this is how you treat your MVP. So it's it just boggles yeah. my mind that. You know, they can't just make this make Aaron happy when this is like the face of your franchise. Yeah. Draft the pieces that, you know, he wants. Like, let him have a seat at the table where he can say, look, I need this X, Y, and Z to bring another Lombardi trophy back to Green Bay. And they just look at him like, no, no, yeah, no, no, we're fine. No, we're good. And like, okay. I know I need to tread lightly here. Yeah. It coaching was the reason they lost the NFC championship game. Like that game was like, I fully believe. And I know I'm sorry. Everything worked out the way it was supposed to. It's fine. Oh, it, oh, it did. It did. It did. And I'm very happy, but um, <laughs> I really think that he could, if they just shut up and let him be him, he would have won them the NFC championship game. Do I think they would have gone in and won the Super Bowl If the chiefs looked like they did, who knows? But I just think there's so many big question marks there. And it's like, why aren't you just listening to him? And now like we're hearing him talk for the first time about wanting to be a dad. Yeah. He's been a bachelor my entire existence. And now he has a fiance and he wants a family. Like I think his mentality is changing and he's maturing finally. So who knows, but I really, really believe that it, everything's every, this is all um, hyped up way too much. It's, it's definitely that, that Tom Brady effect because guys like Rogers and guys like Russell Wilson in your room, honey, in your room, like Russell Wilson, you know, are looking at what Tom Brady's doing. Like Tom Brady spent almost all of his career, you know, spent all of his career in New England, comes down to Tampa, says, I need this. Give me this and I will bring a trophy to your city. And mm -hmm. they said, yeah. Okay, you yeah. can do whatever we'll you, you want. <laughs> we can do whatever you want, Tom. We give you all. We give keys to castle, and that's what they did. And I think that's what you know. These quarterbacks now that are bit, that have been in the league for a while are going. I want that. Like I want to be able, like especially the quarterbacks that have won Super Bowls for their organizations. They're like, I want that type of power. Like you know, if you want multiple Super Bowls, 
Like, let me have a seat at the table. Let me have my hand in the draft. Let me let me court the guys via free agency that should come here and play for this team to win you championships. And that's why, you know, Russell Wilson was, you know, talk of trade rumors or talk of going somewhere else. That's why Aaron Rodgers is still in the news about him getting traded or him retiring. It's because, you know, it just ripples back to Tom Brady about, you know, the league is changing where the the players have more of a voice now of about how teams are being run like they, you know, how they were back in the day because these guys want to, they, they, you know, I don't think most players want to switch teams a ton of times. They want to stay in their home city where they were drafted, where they they can make the most money, but also win championships for those teams. It's the legacy of these guys that they want to, you know, put that, that footprint on, especially guys like Aaron Rodgers, who's what he's 38 right now. He's only got a few years left where he, he wants to win another trophy. And if, if, if Green Bay's not going to give it to him, he's going to say, you know what, I'll just, you know, win a trophy, you know, hosting, I'll win an, I'll win an Emmy hosting Jeopardy instead of winning, <laughs> winning in a Lombardi trophy for Green Bay. Well, mine and Bialik actually hosted Jeopardy and all of Twitter and everybody went bonkers Blossom? for her. Yes. Blossom hosted Jeopardy, which everybody loved her. But I'll tell you this, another funny thing in Green Bay, I think – might be 12 or 13 years. Bart Starr didn't play any longer. They forced him out. Brett Favre played, I think, 12 years, and then he was forced out. Aaron Rodgers is in his 12th year. This is just a franchise. This is just how it goes. This is just how they work. Yep. All 12 years. See you later. And the only other team I can think of you go to, give me the Vegas Raiders and give me Chucky as my coach with Aaron Rodgers. Henry Ruggs, Darren Waller. Oh, oh, holy offense me. I like that. He would make them Super Bowl contenders. Oh, yeah. Oh, that That new stadium that they got there in Vegas. Oh, 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 the marketing. Oh, season ticket sales. Stop it. I I, I just – That's what I think. It just boggles up my mind that, you know – and Rodgers is – he's playing like he's still a young guy in the league. I mean, the guy won MVP. So, like, if you're an organization that, look, they were one game away from the Super Bowl. And, you know, listen, the better team won. Let's just say that. But, you know, the way he played throughout the season, MVP status. And when, you, when you're an organization that doesn't really acknowledge that, I would be disgruntled, too. And I would be like, look, if you're not going to help me out here, which they haven't done it in the past few drafts. Years, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's like, what you know, what yeah. are we, what do we do? I, if I was Aaron Rodgers, I'd be like, what are we doing here? Like you're not giving me the the keys that I need to to do the thing that we're supposed to be doing is to win a trophy. You're not doing this. So, so what are we doing here? If you're yeah. trying to if you're trying to make me leave, you're doing it. You know, and nothing against Jordan Love, which you know he went on Pat McAfee saying, "Look, there's nothing against Jordan. I love Jordan. I love playing with him. Everybody loves him." It's it's not him. It's the, the people upstairs that are making these these stupid decisions. So you know, we'll see. Uh, another guy that's been in the news is Chip, your boy, Julio Jones. Good old JJ. Which uh, old we all, which we all thought would be traded by yesterday's June first start of of the uh, you know the basically season of of yeah. transactions. Nothing has happened yet. Obviously. Um, Something might happen maybe this weekend, next couple of weeks. Julio Jones is, is you know, this is subject of, of topic two. He was, I wouldn't say goaded. He didn't know he was live on the air on the uh, the, the Skip Bayless show with uh, your boy Shannon Sharp uh, saying he's out of here. Uh, thoughts and opinions about Julio Jones. Where could he go? What teams could maybe package a deal to trade for Julio Jones? Jordy, uh, Jordan, I want to go to you first. Who, who could be the suitor? for Julio Jones. All right. This is a take that I've had ever since (laughs) that phone call that I'm 100% standing by. And Chip, I know we're riding this. I think, don't you want him to stay? Isn't that in your heart? Is that what you want? Okay, fine. I totally agree. Yes. In my heart, I want him to stay in Atlanta. Yes. Okay. But if he had to go anywhere, I would want him to be in LA on the Chargers with Justin Herbert. Just because this team, this roster is stacked. And the only their record last year did not represent how good of a team this actually is. A lot of it, and like I don't want to talk any shit on Anthony Lynn because I think he is an incredible person. <laughs> but his coaching last year, extremely questionable. Every move yeah. he made, I was like, what the heck is going on here? So I think if Julio comes in, brand new coach, you have this stacked roster. 
I think Julio just takes them to the next level. And I think that's an insane weapon for Justin to have. Julio, the injuries, uh, it's an obvious red flag, but we know if Julio's healthy, he's still got it. Like, there's yep. no doubt in my mind about that. And I will fight anyone to the death that tries to disagree. <laughs> so, I don't know if this is actually in the cards. I think they do have enough to offer up for him, but that is what I'm hoping and wishing happens. Yeah, I would. I got to tell you, dream scenarios, or at least from looking with my Falcons managerial cap on, I would <laughs> never put him anywhere in the NFC. I yeah. would put him in the AFC. And I would put him with a team, and most teams, any team that gets him is going to get better. But you want to try to align your compensation with what you want. So if you're getting a, a second-round pick, you want to try to find the team that's going to finish, obviously, in the bottom half of the standings in their division or the bottom half of the AFC. So, you know, you want to try to get a team that will give you a higher pick. Um, so I think the Chargers, for him, that would be a dream scenario. Um, he goes to a team with a, a great rookie quarterback. You've already got Keenan Allen. You've already got some talent offensively. They've kind of redone the offensive line, which is good. Um, you know, I still think, and this is just um, – Everybody keeps pointing to the Patriots, and I mean, where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, they've gone out of their way to really put together a, a, a good team as far as offensive. Offensively, I think they can get – they're going to get better depending upon when Mac Jones starts and, and when Cam lets go and how that all works. But I think that New England could also be – this could all go to complete shambles, I think. They have the highest – I think risk as far as New England has never spent more than like 15 or 20 million in free agency. And this year they spent like 300 or 400 million dollars. Robert in Kraft Canada. dipped into the whole massage money and said, look, I'm going to spend yeah. it on in free, <laughs> in free, free, play, agency. In free agency. So, I mean, it's kind of a, I think that it's either going to be Bill Belichick. Usually he corrals one older wide receiver, a really good one. And he can right. strap him on the back and get him to know the Patriots way and take him places. Right. Now he's strapping on like two tight ends, you know, yeah. a couple of other offensive pieces. So a lot to be asked of a lot of players in different skill positions. So um, I still think where there's smoke, there's fire, probably the Patriots. I know Chuck brought up the 49ers with Shanahan. Um, I would like that fit. I don't know how much money they have. I know the Patriots can afford them. <sighs> I don't know if San Francisco has a lot of money, um, but that would be a good spot as well with Ayuk um, and um, the smaller uh, slot guy and also Kittle as well. So um, we'll have to see. But, yeah, I still think the Pats, and I think they have the highest impact of Julio could go there and things could fall completely apart of the quarterback position. Mac Jones comes in, does awful, or you know he's a rookie at the wheel – falls asleep, you know, Cam, I think, is over the hill and done. Um, so, I don't know. We'll have to see. But I think the Pats. That's what I think. Mac Jones will not start a game this year. Cam will be playing all 17 games. I think that is the funniest thing I have ever heard in my life. Yeah, I think entire that's pretty ridiculous. Life. <laughs> that's fine. That's cool with me. Uh, He's injured. Him going it's to San Fran, I like it if they did not have Jimmy Garoppolo. If they had somebody else there besides Jimmy G, I just don't think he can get the ball to him. I just don't. And this goes back to our conversation about 20 minutes ago about Jimmy J. Um, I like him. And this is a rumor that came up over the weekend where him and Russell Wilson have been talking like him going to the Seattle. Like that would be a great, that, like, that's like a match made in heaven. Those two guys, because then you got on one side, Julio, the other side, you got the man freak, which is, you know, DK Metcalf. Like, imagine those two physical freaks, like freaks on your right and left. Like, that's that's a quarterback's dream. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're the Falcons and you did that to yourself and they're in the <laughs> NFC, you may as well just shoot yourself in the foot. You may as well just blow your whole foot off with a gun. But it's got to yeah. be the, the price has to, you know, if, if the Seattle Seahawks offer – you know, a pretty good King's ransom for Julio. Then you maybe the have Seattle to pull Seahawks will finish better than new England Patriots this year. So I think you have a better, better I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that answer. Yet I think because I, think, I already have, well, I have one too many bets with you already. Now. <laughs> I don't, don't want to make any more with you. 
Because I yeah. kind of want to pull the trigger and say, well, you know what? Well, I will take that bet. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think, Jordy? You think the Seahawks finish with a better record than the Patriots? That is so. <sighs> Yeah. That's a good take. That's it's a, good, a very a good, good take. take. That's a that's very a good, good that's a good make you think stop. So and, I'm gonna say Chuck, I'm gonna say Seahawks over Patriots. Yeah, Chuck brings up a great point. The Patriots return a lot of COVID sitting uh, players who did opt out, um, and it'll be good. It'll be good to see their defense come back to where it is. I think Bill Belichick basically is just gonna make this an offer that they can't refuse and gonna, he's basically sense. doing it to get to the Super Bowl to go face Tom Brady. I, so really, Belichick, I really hope I've seen a lot about the Tennessee Titans too. Yeah. And AJ, Brown, AJ Brown's been like fishing. Yeah. Oh, and like they lost Corey Davis. They lost Tom yeah. Freeze. They lost John New Smith. So like, it makes sense, but the Titans are just <laughs> one of those teams that like, I don't enjoy <laughs> supporting. Like I don't not like them. I have no reason not to like them but I just don't like them and I don't know why. So I don't want him to go there. It's kind of like just like, looking at somebody and being like, God, I, I really know, don't like, like your I, face. Yeah, like, I just, just really, yeah. there's something about you I just don't like. You have one of those punchable <laughs> faces. Yeah, I match the Titans for me. I just want to punch you in the, the damn, I don't know yeah. what it is. I just want to punch you. You're You've such the nicest, like that. you're such the nicest person in the world. I just want to, I just want to, Deck you in the face. I just that is actually you. there is nothing wrong with the Titans. Great organization, great team. Everyone on that team seems like little angels. And yet I'm like, no, I don't want to root for you. <laughs> let's do a, let's do a lightning real quick. Okay. Where will he land? Jordan go. Chargers. Chip. Pats. Seahawks. There we go. There's there's our there lightning. you go. Well, yeah, we'll see. All the money, and I haven't I haven't updated on the uh I haven't looked at salary caps since everybody. I know the Falcons have to get rid of them because I don't think they can afford to sign their rookies. They have not done that yet. So they, they can't afford to. Chip, can you guys afford to pay your water boys or your yeah. your towel people? Well, the all? water boys actually work for free. They're usually okay. kids of the sons and coaches. But yeah. I mean, right now, probably not. Probably not. So. You know, they're, they're in a sticky situation. They're in a very sticky situation. But this frees up $15 million in cap room. This lets us breathe a little bit. Uh, and also will probably net us at least a second-round pick and potentially another player. Yeah. Um, just depending I think that's upon. the best situation. If they get like a real – not even a really good guy, a decent guy, someone that can benefit them, even if it's in the slightest with a second or third, I think that's best-case scenario. I don't think anyone's going to give up a first for him. We've seen no. some rumors fly around about that, though. They've said some teams have a first, so we'll see. Offered first? Yes, they said one team at least offered a first. Really? See, so, I would go. I would go. Goodness. I would go for a two and a three, and then maybe a player. Yeah. Or, yeah. That's. I wouldn't go for a first. No. I would like that. We'll have to see. I know that the Falcons. I think planned. I don't think they planned to get rid of Julio, but I just didn't think they. The board, the draft night, obviously we've all talked about the draft, how everything fell and what they decided to do um, with Pitts. And obviously Julio leaving is is devastating. This offense with him could be a lot more potent than without him. But with Pitts, Ridley stepping up, uh, you know, um, Arthur Smith's running attack, I think that they have enough playmakers around Matt Ryan uh, to keep the Falcons in the top half. So – uh, of offensive categories like they were last year. So, all right. Well, on that note, we're out of here. Any last thoughts? It's been a joint show with Play the Bay and Onside Chicks tonight. Uh, we apologize for you know coming into your time slot, Jordy. Sorry about that. Yes, no, we kind of we needed it. I it was know. it was a dry week. We <laughs> no. needed some. We needed some excitement. So, any, any, any <laughs> final thoughts before we get on out of here, Chip? Anything from you? Um, no, just excited. Hopefully, I think by the end of next week, um, Julio Jones won't be an Atlanta Falcon. That's what I think. I don't know if it'll happen this week. They're fielding multiple team offers, so a lot to work through. But by the end of the next week, we'll see Julio Jones in a different uniform. <laughs> in LA. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, besides getting tattoos of uh, Nick Foles' number on you, uh, what, what do you got? <sighs> She's going um, to the West Coast. God yeah, I'm going to the West Coast, and I think I need to be stopped soon. I yeah. think my vendor, <laughs> my vendor is 
<laughs> toward its ending once I get back. Epic proportions. It's Are you? Recent. I'll yeah, tell you. Been, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story before we get out of here. I went okay. to San Diego a few years ago. Are you taking a connecting like straight through nonstop? Yeah. Okay, so I, you know, was a struggling, uh, you know, financially college college kid. You know, I, I took multiple flights out to San Diego. I went from Tampa to Atlanta to Atlanta to LA to LAX down to San Diego. So coming back, I missed my flight because of, of a night of, of debauchery, of drinking that night, okay? So Fire. my flight from San Diego to LA was about a 45-minute flight. It's not that, not that far. But our my plane was an eight person prop plane from San Diego to LA. Yeah. Very scary. This is the type of plane. If you've ever seen major league chip, you've seen major league a few times. You know how that prop plane comes rolling in. They have to tape the propellers. <laughs> that's kind of how it was. Okay. So that's okay. the type of plane I took from San Diego to LA and I'm on this flight. I'm hung over. I missed my flight. I'm hung over as of like, Oh my, like I didn't want to be bothered. And there's, there's this lady sitting right next to me. And we start hitting some turbulence. Now, hitting turbulence, you know, from a 747 to a prop plane is way totally different. different. Totally yeah. different. Like, set, like you know, turbulence in a 747 is like little little waves. Turbulence in a, in a prop plane is like you're about to die in a, <laughs> in a roller coaster, okay? So I'm sitting here, and I'm hungover in this, and we hit turbulence. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess this is a good day to die because I'm hungover. <laughs> and, like, and the lady next to me just digs her like fingernails into my arm and goes, we're gonna die. I'm like, I look over and I have sunglasses on. It's like nine o'clock in the morning. I'm like, can you, can you not do that? Like, did I you, hit can, you, can you not yeah. touch me? Like, and I told her, I was like, if it's our time, it's our time. And then she was like, how could you say that? And then like a minute later, we, no turbulence at all. <laughs> no, I it legitimately was- would have hit her. Oh. I, I I had no strength. I was just like, I'm tired. I'm hungover. I don't touch me. And like, if it's our time, it's our time. And, and you know, I had a good time. Jordan, in San Diego. That won't happen. And don't take it. Won't happen to you though. No, I'm anywhere. American. This is my first time. I've like made it in life. This okay. is my first but- <laughs> time not flying Spirit or Frontier. Oh, good. Okay. I'm on yeah, an yeah. American flight. <laughs> good job. Things are gonna okay. be great, nonstop. <laughs> Okay. I've like hit my peak in life right there now. There you go. Don't okay. say that. No, plenty of life left. Yeah, you, you still know, gotta. You still, still gotta. Uh, you still no, gotta. I, like, really, hit the I have first no right class. to say that after this weekend. You, you still gotta hit the first class like department, which yeah, I'm, still, I'm still trying to get into. I'm like business economy, but then like first class is like the ultimate. I got a notification today. It was like for six hundred and ten dollars upgrade to first class. And I'm like, no, <laughs> who the fuck do you think I am? Like <laughs> that is not going to happen. <laughs> All right, for uh, for myself, uh, Sporty Jordy of Onside Chicks and Chip uh, Kaylee, of course, her power went out, so we'll we'll talk to her later. Uh, make sure to uh, follow Onside Chicks. Actually, Jordan, you uh, plug Onside Chicks real quick before we get on out of here. Yeah, so you can find us Onside Chicks on YouTube. We are at Onside Chicks on Instagram. We are at Onside Chicks Pod on Twitter. We stream live every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. They came into our time slot today. <laughs> it's totally fine. We needed Invaded. it. Invaded. We, we invaded, invaded. Yes. We invaded. Yeah, it. Yeah, a lot of fun. But yeah, that's where you can find us. And make sure to follow Play the Bay on Facebook at Play the Bay 2020, on Twitter at Play the Bay TB, and also on Instagram at Play the Bay TB. You can catch us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live, Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter. We will see you guys later. And uh, yeah, go Bolts. Go Bolts. Go Sixers. Oh, you really showed that. <laughs> how, how could you? Thanks for listening to Play the Bay. We'll be back again with another episode on the Believe Podcasting Network. If interested in advertising, please contact Believe.com.